This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. Oh, this is nice music, Craig. Where'd you get this? Don't tell me that we actually broke the piggy bank and got some new bumpers. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, Don K. Preston is my special guest this hour, X Zone Nation, and he is the president and founder of the Preterius uh, Research Institute of Admore, Oklahoma. He is a prolific author, having published 19 titles and many DVDs on MP3s on biblical prophecy. He owns two popular websites, www. How do you say that? Eschatology? Eschatology. Eschatology.org and BibleProphecy.com. He is the co-host with William Bell of the popular internet radio program, Two Guys and the Bible, that airs on Tuesday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time on www.8070.net. Uh, Don lectures around the world and engages in formal debates and radio programs. He is available for seminars and debates, but he does not do windows or floors. His website <laughs> is www.bibleprophecies.com. And Dr. Don, always great having you on the show. How are you, my friend? I'm well, Rob. I am very, very well. This has been an extremely long day, uh, I must say. My day started about 3 o'clock this morning. My goodness. So you, you may have to jolt me awake every once in a while when you want to ask me a question, but otherwise I'll be fine. Well, listen, I think the topics you and I are going to be discussing tonight are going to keep you going, my friend, because one thing I'd like to ask you, Don, usually you and I talk about Bible prophecies because they're in the headlines. And you know what? I haven't seen very much about biblical prophecies in the last couple of months. What's going on? Well, that, that really is a fascinating question. We, we seem to be in a little bit of a lull. And what happened is we had another flurry of failed prophecies. Men like John Hagee and others exactly like him were predicting that the end of the world was going to come. I, I think a lot of people will remember Jonathan Kahn yes. and his mystery of the Shemitah uh, and uh, his failed prediction that the American uh, economic system was going to completely collapse no later than September of 2015. Well, okay, the economy's not great here in America, but we did not experience what he said we were going to. Mm -hmm. And again, you had the failed predictions of the four blood moons of John Hagee that took place or that didn't did not take place last year. And oh, by the way, he actually went on record as claiming 
that the man of sin was going to be revealed. First of all, it was June of this year. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't turn out real well. Then it was July and maybe August. Well, here we are already, August the 10th, and the man of sin has not been revealed. Now, I, I tell you, when I very first heard that prediction, Rob, I got on YouTube and started looking up the end of the world for 2016, man of sin, 2016. And I produced a series of YouTube videos uh, in response to all of those claims. And in my videos, I, I did some actual biblical exegesis. You know, exegesis is drawing out of the biblical text what is actually there instead of reading something into it that's not there. That's called eisegesis, by the way. And I, I did an entire series on the man of sin. And uh, uh, the response to the series, by the way, was really, really excellent. But be that as it may, I think what we're seeing now is a little bit of a lull. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Hagee and his crowd are trying to think up their next round of phantasmagoric uh, expectations. Now, I did hear a deal the, just the other day. Th this is just barely starting to bubble up about they're, they're ready to start rebuilding the temple. Now, that's actually quite an old prophecy going all the way back to into the 80s. I remember predictions that they were ready to rebuild back in the 1980s. Uh, got the same problem today that they did then. You got something called the Dome of the Rock over there that I don't think the Muslims are really ready to give up. So, again, I, I think we're in a little bit of a period of a lull as a result of the really public, the really egregious failures of the last round. So I think they're going to let that die down a little bit, and then something else will happen in the news, and they'll start generating their prophecies. They'll start writing their books again, telling us this is it. This is it. We're going to see the end of the world any time now. They do keep love getting that uh, that um, built up suspense. You know, when is it going to happen? Oh, geez, you know what? We were wrong. We better go back to the drawing board and try to figure out where the hell we went wrong. Um, any news on the Antichrist? Well, that that was where John Hagee was predicting that it was going to happen in June of this mm -hmm. year, or July, or perhaps August. And by the way. Uh, a lot of the YouTube videos that I mentioned that were predicting the man of sin, yes. the Antichrist, was going to be revealed by June, July. Uh, a lot of those videos have already been taken down. You can't find them anymore. Say it, is, <laughs> say it isn't so. Say it isn't so. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I really get a If it wasn't so sad, yeah. if, it, if it wasn't a, an absolute shame and a disgrace that people— Keep making these predictions. I I was on a website yesterday, and this guy said that he he just knows that we are in the last days. Now he wasn't setting a date, mm -hmm. but this guy says I had a I had a dream about you last night and your predictions, and I'm going, oh good lord, when are we going to get <laughs> over this kind of nonsense? Why do they keep lingering on? Why don't people just accept the fact that these people don't know what they're talking about? All they're doing is, is sensationalizing um, non-truths and say, all right, you know what? We're not going to listen to you guys. You, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. We'll wait until somebody credible like Dr. Don K. Preston actually tells us that we should get our stuff together because the end is near. I think that's a great question for an analytical psychoanalytical study you know there there is uh there's a fascinating uh psychological term mm -hmm. called cognitive dissonance now there's a mouthful for you yes it is but cognitive dissonance is the big fancy term for what happens with people psychologically when, when their belief system has been falsified, demonstrated to be false, and yet nonetheless they keep on believing in it. So what do we have 
in the world of prophetic prognostications. You have followers of John Hagee, of Benny Hinn, of Hal Lindsey, whose predictions have been proven wrong over and over and over again. I mean, I heard personally, I sat and watched it with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears. Mm -hmm. In 1999, John Hagee on the Benny Hinn show said the rapture would probably be within six months. Let's see, 1999, 2016. I think we're a little past the deadline. I think we are too. And, you know, the audience just erupted in, in applause. Benny Hinn acted just shocked. Are we really that close? He pondered. And, of course, John Hagee said, we are that close. Followed by, immediately, an appeal for money because we got to get this word out. Well, hey, if it's within six months, don't worry about raising money. We should have thought of that before. Yeah. Listen, what's, so, what's the background of Benny Hinn? What do we know about him? He's a fake. He's a charlatan. Oh, I, uh, where does he come from? Um, and, and who the hell is his hairdresser? Because they do a lousy job. <laughs> that may be the best question you've ever posed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I really honestly do not know a lot about his background. Mm -hmm. I, When he burst on the scene, I was like you. Who does his hair and why? Uh, but I, I, I was shocked at his audacity and the, the blatantly showmanship of his ministry. And I have seen him do and say things on stage that you would think, you would think, you would hope, you would even pray that sane, logical, calm, mm -hmm. rational people would witness and say, where's the remote? I've got to change the, I've got to change the channel. Uh, and yet he experienced almost a meteoric rise to popularity. He continues to be extremely popular. He continues to pull some of these outlandish uh, showy, phantasmagoric stunts on one evening. I And I really can't watch him over five to seven minutes at a time. I, I can't stomach any more than that. And I've done enough investigation of his so-called healings to know, and I've, I know the Bible well enough to know that he is nothing but a charlatan. Sending, sending a challenge yeah. to debate me years and years ago, of course, I got nothing back. I got no response whatso whatsoever. But be that as it may, uh, on one program, he said, I'm going to give the Holy Spirit to everyone here tonight. And so you would have thought he was in Las Vegas. You know, he takes his hand and he moves his hand, shaking like he's got dice in his hands. He blows on his hands like he's blowing on a set of dice. And by the way, he looked like he really knew what he was doing. <laughs> uh, so he's probably well experienced in, in blowing on dice. And through, ostensibly, the Holy Spirit, and people were just falling down all over the auditorium. And again, I'm going, oh, good Lord, when are we going to get rid of people like this? When, no, no, no. when are going? When are people going to see through this utter nonsensical falsehood? And you know, I I like to be as kind as possible, and I like to be as tactful as possible. But there are times in which you just simply have to call a spade a spade, and people need to realize that Benny Hinn is a fake and a charlatan and a false teacher. That's just simply all there is to it. He has made false claim after false claim. His theology reeks to high heaven. There's nothing biblical about it. And if people want to contact me about that, they want to challenge me on that, then go for it, folks. 
go to my website, eschatology.org or BibleProphecy.com. Send me an email and challenge me on what I'm saying about Benny Hinn. I'll be more than happy to correspond with you about that and demonstrate what a false imposter and what an imposter mm -hmm. he really is. Well, my producer just has just fired me over this uh, this information. Uh, critics of uh, critics of Benny Hinn can span the multitude of areas: his word faith theology, his little God theology, his claim that each person of the Trinity is actually his own Trinity, his outright lies about his accomplishments, and much more besides. But for the purposes, blah blah blah, Hinn teaches that God intends for everyone to be healed of all their diseases. If people simply have faith to believe they can be healed, God will heal them through the agency of a healer like himself. Hinn's, Hinn's crusades are carefully constructed to lead and manipulate those in attendance with singing and repetitive music that build a particular atmosphere and sense of anticipation. These crusades crescendo into a time where he announces that God has begun to heal people and he then invites people to come to the stage to tell what God has done, a technique that was mastered by Catherine Coleman <laughs> and, and since then has become a staple of faith healing. Hinn claims that God is working powerfully through him to heal others and begins to list those miracles, usually starting with ones that are invisible and unverifiable at the moment, diabetes, depression, and the like. As the healings begin, many people come forward hoping for their own miracle. Generally, though, only people who claim to have already been healed are showcased on the stage where Benny Hinn speaks to them and then often slays them in spirit. Uh, in this way, he has manipulated countless people to give money to his cause, believing that money that giving money will be the key to activating their miracle. Not a single one of Hinn's miracles have ever been verified though many have been proven to be false or temporary. Well, all of that is what I meant when I said he is an imposter. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, have, I have studied the Pentecostal movement since I was a very young man, Rob. So many of my friends when I was going in high school were of the Pentecostal persuasion. Mm -hmm. I have personally attended I don't even know how many tent revivals and how many healing services. I have had personal Bible studies with Pentecostal ministers, prominent ones. Uh, that is to say they were prominent in the town where I lived. I, I have challenged men who claim to have the miracle working power. I have challenged them to demonstrate that ability. And I, I, I will share one quick anecdote here. Please I was do. preaching in a small town uh, called Stewart, Oklahoma, years ago. It's just a little bitty wide spot in the road, a fairly good-sized church for such a small community. And I made a comment during my lesson about false miracles and about false hope and about the fake false healers that we have in our world. And... After services, we were a bunch of us standing outside, and this gentleman who had been in services came up to me, and he was obviously agitated. And he says, how can you deny miracles? How can you deny? How, I just really lit off on me. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, do you have personally the miracle working power from God that you can heal anyone of any illness and he kind of stood there and stuttered just a tiny bit and his wife his wife standing next to him said he most assuredly does <laughs> well there was a hospital not far from us and i said i tell you what you do let's go just down the road let's go through the cancer ward and you clear that floor out we will have the doctors verify every single miracle that you perform. And I said, when you do that, I'll be a follower of yours. I will begin to preach what you're saying. And he's, he 
kind of stuttered and hummed. Oh, he said, no, you're trying to tempt God. I said, no, no, no. You claim to have the power. You're at least, well, your wife said you've got the power from God. It's not your power. It's the power of God. I said, now, in the Bible, they could raise people from the dead. I said, let me ask you a question. Can you raise someone from the dead? Now, we happen to be standing approximately 100 yards from a graveyard, Rob. And mm. when I asked him, can you raise someone from the dead? Once again, his wife chimed in, yes, he can. To which he kind of turned and looked at her like, woman, shut you, up. Need, to, you need to shut <laughs> up. <laughs> it, was, it was a Kodak moment. But now his wife has attested that he can raise the dead. Well, I glanced over there. Yeah. You can call this providence. You can call this coincidence. There was still a tent up from a funeral held that very day. And I called his name, and I pointed to the tent and to the grave, grave and I said, I tell you what. Let you and me walk across the road to that grave. You raise that person out of that grave, and I'll raise the next one. And then you and I will start preaching this to all the world. To which he simply promptly turned around and walked away. My goodness. And I tell you, Rob, that scenario has been repeated perhaps not as dramatically, but in, in situation after situation after situation in my lifetime, I have investigated with as open heart, with as open mind as I could possibly do. I have had friends who were Pentecostal, quote, healing ministers, unquote, mm -hmm. who had quote, powerful healing ministries, unquote. And I studied with these men, good men, men that, again, that were my friends. And I've had them admit to me, to my face, I cannot refute what you are saying from the Bible. I can see that what you're saying about this from the Bible is true, but I, I can't give it up. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And one of them, another anecdote, a man that I had, I considered a very dear friend. He and I had become very dear friends over a six month period of time. We studied twice a week, me teaching them from the Bible or attempting to teach them from the Bible that the age of miracles was over. They ceased in the first century. He finally admitted to me that that was true biblically but the Holy Spirit wouldn't let him accept it. And I said, well, <laughs> okay, did the Holy Spirit write this book that you now admit teaches that miracles ended in the first century? Well, yeah, Holy Spirit caused that to be written. I said, well, then you're telling me that the Holy Spirit is guiding you not to believe what he said. Hmm. I, I said, that's kind of illogical. And about that time, Rob, my mother was had been diagnosed with terminal colon cancer. Oh, God. They called me and told me that she was critically ill. I called my friend. I wasn't trying to be harsh. I wasn't trying to be critical. I wasn't trying to be unkind. I was a man whose mother was terminally ill. Yeah. And I told my friend, his name was, I'll call his name, his name was Cliff. I said, Cliff, I just got the call about my mom. She is critically ill. She has terminal cancer. Go with me to Arkansas. Lay your hands on her, which you claim to be able to do, and heal her. And I will preach this to the world. Oh, Don, you're just trying to trick me. You're just trying to put me on the spot. I don't appreciate you calling me like this. Oh, you should be not kidding. be doing that because you're simply tempting God. I said, Cliff, my mother is dying. I'm asking you if you 
possess the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. if you really possess what you advertise in the newspaper every week as a powerful healing ministry from God, then go with me, heal my mother, and gain a convert. He adamantly refused to go. Well, if that's not revealing, Rob, I don't know what is. Don, my friend, stand by. I've got to take my news break with uh, Amanda Kern at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation, Dr. Don K. Preston is a special guest and a welcomed member here at the Exxon. His website is www.bibleprophecies.com, and we'll both be back on the other side of this break. Continuing, well... How do we how do we best say this? We're going to be continuing investigating the reality of today's religion and those charlatans who like to feed on the weak, including the Church of Satan. We'll be back on the other side of this break, Exxon Nation. Don't go away. to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. This is news from the Exxon. I'm Amanda Curran. It's that time of year again. Over the next two nights, viewers will get to watch the annual Perseer Meteor Shower that will peak tonight and tomorrow, giving sky watchers a real treat this year. Bill Cook of NASA's Meteoroid Environments Office said forecasters are predicting a Perseus outburst this year with double normal rates on the nights of August 11th and 12th. Under perfect conditions, rates could soar to about 200 meteors per hour. The best way to see Perseus is to go outside between midnight and dawn on the morning of August 12th and make sure to allow yourself time for your eyes to adjust to the dark. Increased activity may also be seen August 12th to 13th. Good luck. It's an exciting time for astronomers as the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is now in peak position for unobstructed communications between Mars and Earth for the next few weeks. The MRO sends back photos of Mars every month but this month's dispatch of 1,035 photos is unique as the geometry of Earth and Mars offers a sweet spot for data return. Since Mars and the Sun are on opposite sides of the Earth's sky at the moment, when the Sun shines directly on the planet's equator, it splashes light from the North Pole to South, giving the MRO its most complete view of the red planet, where for the rest of the year, either the North or the South Pole is in constant darkness. An incredible new breakthrough in technology has been developed at Berkeley University, where engineers have built the first dust-sized wireless sensors that can be implanted into the body. The sensors are about the size of a large grain of sand that converts ultrasound vibrations from outside the body into electricity to power a tiny onboard transistor that is in contact with a nerve or muscle fiber. Researchers are hoping that these battery list sensors could also be used to stimulate nerves and muscles to treat disorders such as epilepsy or to stimulate the immune system or tamp down inflammation. I'm Amanda Curran, news from the Exxon. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at GWWilliamsNYC at gmail.com. Dr. Williams, 
by 11 at AOL.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Tech with Corey K weekly here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. From the world of computers to the ever popular computerized gadgetry that are becoming part of our everyday life and living and society. From kids and their gaming devices, teens and their smartphones to the applications of personal and business computers. From hardware to software, from standalone units to network computers. Join high tech guru Corey K weekly right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network as he takes on the topics that will be of use and great value to the international audience of the Exxon Broadcast Network. High tech with Corey K weekend at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Dr. Don K. Preston is our special guest for this hour, Exxon Nation, BibleProphecies.com. Don, uh, you know, there have been so many false evangelists. You know, uh, let me see. Uh, Ernest Angley, he used to crack me up. <laughs> like, my God, doesn't he realize that people know he's wearing a wig? And then you've got uh, Jim Baker that you and I talked about. I, I think his wife, Tammy Faye, uh, should have been... Uh, no, sh no. Sh I was going to say a model for makeup, but no, she didn't do that very well. No. Uh -huh. Jimmy Swigert, you know, another fallen evangelist. Uh, and Pat Robertson of the 700 Club, who's still going these days, and yet there have been ties made from Robertson to... Um, African leaders uh, to politicians, uh, and you know he had a failed attempt at trying to run for prime uh, for uh, president of the United States, and yet people still pour money into his ministry. It's staggering. Um, I, I I mentioned a few moments ago before the break that it, it would it would serve for a good so psychoanalytical. Mm -hmm. Uh, investigation and research progress uh, project uh, to investigate why people continue to follow men that have been demonstrated, proven, prima facie proven to be false. Uh, I mentioned cognitive dissonance, and that is a very real thing. Uh, we, we see that in lots and lots of areas. It's, it's not simply in the theological world, right. uh, the religious world. It, this happens to people all of the time. Uh, it, it just simply happens to be perhaps a far greater tragedy when you talk about religion and when you talk about organizations, when you talk about leaders mm -hmm. that have set themselves forward as the spokesman for God that God talks to them. Look, on, on, <laughs> on Facebook just the other day, uh, this lady, and I know the lady 
kind of tangentially. Yes. I, I've never met her face to face, but she and I have actually corresponded. She is in many ways just the sweetest lady, uh, has a wonderful heart of compassion. But she announced on Facebook the other day that God had told her, God had spoken to her that very day that he was healing all autistic children in the United States. And I'm going, good grief. Now, wouldn't that be awesome if it happened? Of course it would. Sure. But. It didn't. It didn't happen. And here is this wonderful, sweet lady. And, and again, I, you know, I'm not questioning her sincerity. And I'm not questioning her love for the Lord. I'm just simply saying her claim was from the get-go absurd. Mm. And it's unbiblical also. So I don't, I, I fail to grasp, Rob. I simply fail to grasp how someone could read this lady's comments. And she has a, a wide audience on Facebook. I fail to grasp how anyone could have read her comments. And here we are four days later, three or four days later, and could look at the world and know without a doubt that every autistic child in America was not healed, is not now perfectly normal, yeah. and not reflect and go, wait a minute, and I will not call her name. But how could they not go, but she said God talked to her. That must mean, since it didn't happen, that God did not talk to her. And on the, on the other side of that, actually, as a perfect corollary to that, I fail to see how that woman, as sweet as she is, mm -hmm could not then look herself in the mirror and go, I'll call her Mary just for convenience sake. It's not her real name. I cannot fathom why she would not look herself in the mirror and go, Mary, you were flat out wrong. God did not talk to me. And just sit down and have a talk with self and say self and self needed to go, huh? And self needed to go, we were wrong. And self needs to say, yes, indeed, we certainly were. We need to change our theology. And yet, as far as I can tell, she has not said one single word about being apologetic for the false prediction. And, and you multiply that with all of these large ministries like Benny Hinn and Oral Roberts was, oh gosh, yeah. uh, you know, his university is at Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've actually spoken as a guest lecturer at the Oral Roberts University. But, and there were some wonderful people there. But Oral Roberts stands up before the world and said he saw a 900-foot-tall Jesus. Oh, my gosh. I remember you and I have discussed this one in the past. Yes. Yeah. Who she told him that if he didn't raise, I've forgotten the exact amount, I think it was three or four million dollars, mm -hmm. but if he didn't raise it within a certain period of time, then the Lord was going to call him home. That would have been such a fantastic opportunity for someone out there, everyone out there to go, you know, this would be a great test. Did the Lord actually appear to him standing 900 foot tall? And did the Lord actually say, if you don't get X amount of millions of dollars by the following date, I'm calling you home to heaven. Instead, one deluded, excuse me, please, crazy guy steps up literally at the 11th hour and says, I'll donate a million bucks myself. That put him over the top. And I'm just going, why do people do this? I mean, 
why not put them to the test? Well, you see, those people have the wheel going round and round and round, but they don't realize the hamster's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one way to put it for certain. But, but I have said very, very often, mm -hmm. and people ask me, they, they say, Don, why is it that you speak out against things like this when you have good, wonderful, sincere, loving people? They love God. They, they, they love the world. They love the Word of God. So why not just leave them alone? And there are many reasons and there are many answers to that, Rob. Number one is truth is truth. I'm going to speak what I believe to be the truth. I don't care if people like it or not. Truth has never been the most popular thing in the world. So I'm, I'm just a guy that cannot look myself in the mirror and know that I'm not speaking out on what I feel are issues of importance and issues that involve truth. Number two, I have seen in my own life of people that I love wrapped up in that worldview, disappointed, disillusioned, discouraged, and depressed because they didn't get their miracle from God. And when they didn't get it, and this is one of the most horrific things in all of the Pentecostal healing world. When they did not get what they were promised, what they prayed for, what they earnestly strove for, what they gave their money for, they were told, well, obviously you don't have enough faith. Uh. You just need to give us some more money. And that angers me on every single level. You know, it sounds like uh, uh, these psychic hotlines that people are addicted <laughs> to. You know, call the, you call up the psychic for your first, uh, what is it, five minutes free, just to find out you're going to be charged for them anyway. Uh -huh. And you get these people who suck you in, who they, they live off the weak. They live off the feeble. They live off those who have a need in their life to believe in something because for they one feed reason off the or desperate in yeah. many many cases I did an interview uh, for several years I was the uh, interviewer for a television program uh, that we produced and it was entitled Christian magazine and we would go into the community into communities we would interview people that had interesting jobs, interesting hobbies, that had experienced some humongous event in their life. Mm -hmm. And we would do the interview, and then we would do a living parable from that. Yeah. And we, we, we were a very highly rated. It was on cable television in a good-sized community. But anyway, we did an interview. And I actually did about three 30-minute segment interviews with a lady whose daughter was murdered in Dallas, Texas. Oh, my gosh. The police had had no success finding her murderer. Someone that they suspected was someone that she knew and had allowed into her apartment. There was no sign of break-in, but anyway had murdered her in her apartment. This woman, her mother, was, to say the least, distraught, desperate, wanting some resolution to this horrific crime that had taken her beloved daughter from her. She was contacted by a prominent psychic who said, I can reveal the identity of the murderer. To make a long story short here, Rob, $50,000 later oh my God. and counting, the lady finally woke up to what was happening, mm -hmm. turned this psychic in, and the psychic was arrested for fraud and the whole situation and rightfully so 
I'm sorry? I said, and rightfully so. Oh, rightfully so. And this woman in sharing that story, what was so tearful, and it was such an emotional uh, series of interviews to talk with her. And as she poured out her heart, and as she pondered about this so-called psychic, how could that how could that person willfully so be so hard-hearted as to string me along knowing I was hurting, knowing I was so desperate, knowing all I wanted was some closure, and all they wanted was my money? And again, it was just such a heart-rending experience. But I used to have a very good friend. He passed away a few years ago now. His name was John Anderson. He was a psychic for Larry Flint. Of Hustler Magazine. Hustler Magazine. And the reason that he got to be his psychic was because he predicted that someone was going to attempt to kill him. Now, John Anderson was a fantastic guy. He was later converted to Christ. He was at one time part of the Church of Satan. He knew Lavoie himself. He was himself a member of that entire psychic world, a Church of Satan business. Very, very prominent, rising up through the ranks. He wrote a book about it, an expose about that world. And all of the tricks and the sleight of hand, the, the, the blatant falsehoods that are told in the occultic world and in the world of Satan, pardon me, Satan worship and what have you. And John used to share with me both privately and he had a radio program Every Sunday night for about three years, I was I was on every Sunday night. He had about a four-hour program, and I was for one hour of that program every single Sunday night. But he used to share with me, both privately and on, and on air, the many, many, many anecdotes that he had as a psychic and the things that he did to deceive people into believing that he could actually tell read their hearts, read their minds, read their thoughts, tell them their future, and the things that he did to just openly deceive people. And it was, and that's what he finally said, led him out of that world. Because he said it was the realization that came to him that in spite of the fact that he was making lots and lots of money, he could not be honest with himself knowing that he was lying to everyone about being a psychic. And he served as an apprentice. I don't know the man's name now. I've forgotten it. It was was in his book. But he served as an apprentice to one of the very, very, very top psychics in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And was, uh, as an apprentice, he was slowly educated in this world of greater and greater and greater tricks, uh, of more and more and more sophistication, of greater and greater levels of deceit. And he said it just dawned on him that he, he could not, as a person of conscience, continue in the world uh, of the psychic world and the church of Satan knowing he was lying to people, knowing there's nothing there, knowing that there is no miracle working power of Satan. There is no psychic power to tell the future. Everything was a lie. And of course, his life was threatened when he abandoned it, Mm -hmm. when he walked off from it. And on and on and on the story goes. Uh, he he was he was a, a fantastic guy with quite a story to tell about the world of psychics. And uh, I think he died it's been two years ago now. 
And just before he died, they had that program that had just come on the air. Uh, what was it? Psychic of Manhattan or something like that? Oh, the long headed I- lady? The Long Island Medium. Yeah, Long Island, Long Island Medium. Mm-hmm. And he shared with me, he said, I know exactly what she's doing. I've done it a hundred times. It's the easiest thing in the world to do once you've learned the tricks. You know? He yeah. said, she's a fake. Well, Every one of them are fakes. Well, look what look at Sylvia Brown. Remember her? She died. And it was funny because we had booked an interview with her for three weeks after she died. Like, shouldn't she have known that she was going to die and not to take, you know, not to book any interviews after a certain date? But that's just one example. Don and I agree with you that there, it, when it comes to psychic readings, take it with a big grain of salt. But what does that say about society who has to call up a psychic and pay whatever it is per minute just to talk to somebody? I really believe that in many, many, many of these instances... And again, it gets into psychoanalysis, and I'm not, a, I'm not a trained psychologist by any means. But in talking to people and studying the issue now for years and years and years, there, there, is, there are so many attitudes. There are so many psychoses. I'll, I'll use that word, perhaps not in the technical sense. But nonetheless, there are so many things that go on with so many people. There's, number one, the desperation that I mentioned to you yes. uh, uh, of this particular lady. There, there is a search for and a desire for knowing the unknown. I mean, after all, wouldn't it be cool, the coolest thing in the world to be able to know the future? It would be. but I mean, the, I, that, that would be pretty awesome yeah. if I knew that three days from now I was going to be in a wreck driving down I-35. Guess what? You Don't be, think I'd go down I-35. Exactly. Exactly. Don, I've got about uh, three minutes left, but I did want to ask you a very uh, a very serious question. In fact, I emailed it to you. Why are the youth of today turning towards Satanism? Oh, my goodness. That, that too, involves an awful lot. And, you know, it's fascinating that the Catholic Church, and I do not know how scientific their surveys were, but the Catholic Church, in a fairly recent study, said that the number one attraction in in regard to spirituality is no longer Christianity, it's not even Islam, it is Satanism. Now, that's a really, really, really frightening thing. I think, however, that there are some things that might help to explain it. Number one, and I've read a little bit of the literature of Satanism. I mentioned my friend uh, John Anderson. He recommended that I read some of the literature, and I did. The, the appeal of Satanism is power. It is independence. It is obviously freedom from the strictures and the restrictions of morality. Well, what are teenagers all about anyway? You remember being a teenager. I remember yeah. being a teenager. You tell me not to do something, what am I going to do? Do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and if you tell me that by following Satan, I'm going to have all this power over all of my enemies, and I'm going to be rich, and I'm going to be powerful, I'm going to be famous. You know, and by the way, you can do drugs, you can do alcohol, you can do sex, you can do anything you want to do. And what are teenagers all about? They're all about hormones. Yep. And they're all about experimentation. They're all about this, and they're all about self. They're all about fulfilling their curiosity about life. And so Satanism has an incredible appeal on many different levels. And in, from reading what literature I have, and I'm not an expert in this field, but I have done some study in it, there is there are absolutely completely negative results of it that many, many mix, many ex-Satanists who've been part of that occultic world yeah. Testify too. Don, I hate to do this, buddy, but I've got to leave uh, for tonight. We'll have you back on in the future. Take care of yourself, my good friend. We- I'd love to pick this topic up with you because I think it's a very important topic. It is an important topic. Good night and God bless. God Thank bless you very you too, much, my Rob. friend. And please give your wife my very best in your inner prayers. I will do that. 
All right, Exo Nation, that's it for tonight. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back tomorrow night at 11 p.m. Eastern as once again we cross the time space continuum to this place that I call the Exo. To Craig here in our studio and Master Control, to the lovely Amanda Curran in Sydney, Nova Scotia, and to you, all the great members of the Exo Nation. Take care of each other. Be happy, be safe, and always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night, everyone. <laughs>